Hello crocheters, welcome to Crazy Cool Crochet. This is Sylvia and today I'm bringing you a crochet granny square sweater. Long sleeves and luckily for us crocheters, granny squares are still trending. So the materials that we're using, measuring tape, scissors, yarn needle, the hook is an F as in Frank or a 3.75 millimeter. Now depending on the size, this is for a size small. So as you work up to larger sizes, you can go up to a larger hook and that will give you bigger squares without having to actually add rows. But we'll get into that later. The yarn that I used, I happen to have number three scrap yarn hanging around. So I used a number three for the colorful parts of the granny square and then for the body I used a number two which is this yarn here and yes it's okay to mix yarn weights it, it works for certain projects and it works for this one so for this project I decided to go with the most basic of granny squares this will use five rows in total and it's just double crochets and we're working the squares with double crochets. So your first four rows will be whatever colors you decide to use and then the fifth row, the last row, will be the color that you use for the body. So we're going to start with a chain of four. And then we form a ring by joining into the first chain, grabbing the yarn, bring it through, all the way through to the loop on the hook with a slip stitch and then chain three. Now we're going to work into the center of the ring, into the hole, and do two double crochets. That first chain three will count as a double crochet. Then chain two, and then do three double crochets into that center. Chain two, three double crochets again. And you can work that tail around the ring. Chain two. We've got one, two, three sets. We need one more. We are forming four corners. There's one, two, three, and then chain two. Now to close that, we go into the top chain of that beginning chain three and we're going to slip stitch however this is where we are going to change color so you bring in your second color and you work a slip stitch with that new color right through the loop on the hook and chain three so again, that will count as a double crochet. And now we're going to do two double crochets into that big space. And you can tug on the strands to tighten up right there. And then two double crochets. There you go. Now into that chain two opening you will work another corner. So do three double crochets, chain two, and three double crochets in the same space. So you've got a corner and a corner. And you will repeat that for four corners. So just go straight into the next space, chain two space, for three double crochets, chain two, 
three double crochets again. Repeat that in the next corner and then we will work on the final corner. So now you can see you've got one, two, three corners completed and then this first one is halfway completed. So we need three more double crochets into that space. Chain two. Then you will close this up with a slip stitch into the top of that beginning turning chain and change colors at that point. And you can cut off the previous colors and leave a tail. So again, bring in the new yarn, slip stitch, chain three, work two double crochets into that first space. And now you're going to work three double crochets into this space right here and then work your corner. Then work three double crochets into the space in between the corners. Work the corner and then continue that around. So this is to show you how we're working this. So there's that space in between the corners, so you work three double crochets. Then on the fourth row, you're going to have two of those spaces. Okay, so work your corner, three double crochets, three double crochets, work your corner. Now the only time you're using the chain two is when you're creating corners. So there's no chains in between. And then of course do the same on the final fifth row. When you are done with your five rows, just tie off the yarn, leave a tail, and of course you're going to have your tails in the back that need to be woven in to hide. So you're going to make four squares, and this is for size small, and medium you will also use four squares. And then we will seam them. Now this panel is a work in progress, so it's not done. But I wanted to show you, so for the size small, we've got the four squares and then the body. So from top to bottom, it will measure 19 inches up and down. And then the width will be about 18 inches. So for a size medium, I would suggest using the next size larger hook. And that will give you slightly larger squares and slightly larger stitches in the body just enough to make it large enough for a medium. And then other sizes, the larger sizes, will require an extra square to give you more width. And then the length you can adjust as needed. Just continue to add rows on the body. We'll get to that in a little bit. Now if you prefer, for example, for a size large, extra large, you can add another row on the square that will give you more overall width. Just remember to end with the color the same as the color of the body for the last row. So now we're going to seam. We'll start with two squares. Right sides are going to be touching each other. Wrong side will be out. We're only going to do the one side. With a yarn needle and thread, so you'll want to start in the corners. Insert the hook into the corner chain. I prefer to knot, and I will go back and do that. I usually do it right here, but in the interest of time, we'll just keep going. Okay, so now I use a regular whip stitch. If you have a different method of joining granny squares that you prefer, feel free to do so. So I am going to work in the back loops. Okay, you see how the chains are forming at the top here? So I like to work in the back loop, which in this case is the loop closest to me. And then the loop further.
It's hard to see here, but let me show you what that will do. So this is what that will look like. So again, if you don't like that look, then you can go through both loops of each chain at the top. So it's up to you, whatever you prefer. So do that to the end and then tie it off. So you will do that until you have four squares joined. Once you have your four squares joined, we're going to work on the body and we're doing all extended single crochets. Okay, so insert your hook into the corner, grab your yarn, chain one to lock it in. Now we're going to be working into each stitch at the top there. So each chain that you see, we're going to be working an extended single crochet. And we are going through both loops this time. So grab your yarn, two loops on the hook, pull through one loop, pull through both loops. Grab your yarn, two loops on the hook, pull through one, pull through two. So as you can see, it's a very simple stitch. It's a variation on a single crochet, but much more interesting. So what this does is give you a longer stitch. So it's a little bit more, I don't want to say it's an open weave. It's not exactly an open weave, but it's not as dense as doing all single crochets. So do this all the way across, centering on each stitch. When you get to a seam, just do the best you can to work your stitches into that area. Continue across. Now when you are done with this first row, it's going to look rather uneven. Don't worry about that. When we do the second row, it will straighten out. When you get to the end, enter your last stitch into the corner. Then chain one and turn. So now we are going to enter a and extended single crochet into each stitch. See, so don't work into that very first space there. And again, work under the two strand chain the exact same way. So just work one <clears throat> extended single crochet into each stitch. all the way to the end then chain one turn and repeat and you will do that for whatever length you prefer so for my size small I did 19 inches total so from the bottom of this to the end of the body or to the top of the body was 19 inches so you can adjust that and don't worry also about the exact number of stitches that you are working with along the row because that would have depended on how you worked your stitches in the seamed areas if you only did one if you did two it's not important we're not working with multiples we don't have to have an exact count however now once you get that first count once you get the count from your first row then make sure that you are consistent throughout so you're going to have the same row count for the entire body and make two panels a front and a back when working the sleeves you are going to work it the same as you did for the main panels with a couple of differences you will use only two of the granny squares and you want to use a little bit looser tension you want the squares to be a little bit bigger than the ones for the body and this is so that we have more room to accommodate the arm. So at the beginning 
of the row and the end of the row at your 13 inches, you will work two extended single crochets into that first stitch. Work as normal. When you get to the end, work two extended single crochets into your last stitch. Chain one turn and then just work evenly. So one single crochet into each stitch. And you also want to be working with a looser stitch for the body of the arm. This stretches nicely so it should give you more room. The sleeve is designed to be on the slimmer side. If you want a wider sleeve, then you will probably need to add another row to your granny squares. And that will give you a wider sleeve until your sleeve measures 18 inches from the bottom to the top, 18 inches total. And it will seem a little bit short, but you've got a little bit of a drop sleeve at the top, at the shoulder. So this should be fine. Now it's time to start assembling our panels. So we are starting with the main panels and you want right sides touching each other, wrong sides out. And we're going to start seaming at the shoulders. So I have chosen an eight inch neck line opening. So I will be seaming for five and a half inches on each side, starting on the outside and working your way in. Now I typically use a whip stitch. So I insert using the yarn needle and length of yarn, insert it into the cornermost stitches. I like to tie it with a knot. And then you're simply working your needle under two strands, the two strand chains at the top, on each panel, bringing it over, and that's all you do. working your way until you meet up with your stitch marker. Then work your way over a couple more stitches and tie it off. Now we are going to seam the sleeve to the body. So mark the center, of course we're wrong sides up. Mark the center of your sleeve and line it up with the shoulder seam. And go ahead and use a stitch marker. I just use contrasting yarn. And then use the same whip stitch to work your way up and seam it. After seaming the sleeves, you will then seam the side and under the bottom of the sleeve, all the way to the bottom of the granny square. And you can use the same whip stitch. Now for a couple of finishing touches, I did a row, one row of single crochet along the neckline and you work that with the front side facing you, insert the hook in the seam of the shoulder and just work a single crochet, regular single crochet in your normal tension around the neckline. And then slip stitch into the first stitch when you come back where you started. Then I also did single crochets along the bottom and also with the right side facing you upside down. So again, insert the yarn in the side seam and work a single crochet along approximately each stitch all the way around. And that's just to give it a, a clean edge. Now I opted to leave the sleeves as is. I thought they didn't look bad. So that's your crochet granny stitch sweater. So I hope you've enjoyed this project and that you come back for the next one. Thank you so much.